Primetime ACC Saturday night. We're talking Virginia and Pitt. But first, I want to talk to you about a special we have at Wager Talk this week. You can get the rest of the college football or NFL season, any handicapper, using coupon code FBALL50. I've had, I now have won five straight weeks in college football, um, turned around my college football season completely. I'm going for a sixth straight winning college football week, and you can get on board with me for the rest of the way at a discount using coupon code FBALL50. All right, Virginia Pitt. Last week, I had a nice best bet winner with SMU as they destroyed Pitt. And as far as Pitt is concerned, they just got steamrolled by a better team last week. On the road, big night game. There's no shame in that, in my opinion. Uh, in fact, I think they had one coming. Undefeated going into that game. Huge target on their back. Pitt kind of always had a loss coming. They weren't going to run the table. And uh, they got it. They took it on the chin last week against SMU. But Pitt still has a lot to play for now. They don't control their own destiny anymore, of course. Uh, the win last week for SMU and then the win for Miami uh, has put SMU and Miami both in, in the driver's seat um, to get to the ACC title. But Pitt still has a head-to-head -head with Clemson, and there's still a lot of football to be played. So I don't think for by any means that Pitt losing last week is going to you know, kind of put them in the dream crusher scenario that we've talked about in years past. Still a lot to play for. Still that head-to-head -head with Clemson that could really, you know, sort of elevate their standing. And then, of course, they're the they're now the team this week that is the home team in the primetime spot. And I would not be at all surprised if they return the favor. So I'm looking at Pitt minus the points here. Uh, I do think it was – I'm pretty sure it's seven and a half across the board. Um, I think there, I think seven and a half makes sense. Uh, I think Vegas would, would love the action on Virginia here uh, because in my opinion, and I think in the bookmaker's opinion, where they make this line on this side of the seven, uh, Virginia is just cooked. Uh, we had a nice 4% win two weeks ago um, going against Virginia with North Carolina, completely destroyed in that game. And now I start to look through the Virginia schedule all the way back to early in the season. And this just looks like a, a very sort of fraud, like, you know, 500-ish type team. Um, you know, I, I think Virginia is probably far worse than their record suggests. Uh, I say that because, you know, they had that comeback win over Wake Forest. They were trailing most of that game, sort of took a valiant effort to come back, win by one. We now know Wake isn't very good. A nice win over Boston College, but that's a Boston College team that I don't think is very good either. Uh, you know, even the road win at Coastal Carolina that kind of looked good at the time, Coastal's lost three straight games in their conference. They don't look great either. So, you know, this is a Virginia team that I think has has beaten some bad teams. And because of that, had their, you know, their profile a, a little bit inflated. Also throw in the fact that they were able to hang around and cover against Louisville. And they were able to backdoor that number against Clemson. And I think it's kept this, this spread somewhat in range again I, I mean if you were to give me minus six and a half with Pitt, that i would probably take i may even lay the seven uh if that ever comes about but but seven is is certainly a key enough number where you know being seven and a half with Pitt sort of just still a lean for me now will i will i be surprised if Pitt comes out wins this game by 20 no not at all it's actually how i think it's going to go virginia is is just awful defensively i think Pitt has their way um, on offense here. You know, Eli Holstein's been awesome. Uh, that's something that coming into the season, I was not overly high on Pitt. One of the reasons was I felt like I, I didn't fully trust their defense. I didn't know what we would get out of Holstein. And, and Holstein's been great. Over 2,000 yards passing already this season, 17 touchdowns against six interceptions. Uh, he's added another three touchdowns on the ground, another, you know, 305 rushing yards on 72 carries. Pitt, by the, the, by the numbers, their passing offense is like top 25, top 30 nationally. Um, some of that has to do with who they've played. But I think that plays against a, a defense like Virginia, who, who I just don't think uh, is on the same level as even some of these other teams You know that Pitt has played so far this year. On the other side of the ball, 
I, Virginia doesn't throw it super effectively, which is an, an issue because I have to believe they're probably playing from behind here. Um, so that's going to be a problem. But the other thing I noticed as I took my loss with Syracuse against Pitt a couple weeks ago on Thursday night is Pitt is very capable of shutting down a one-dimensional team. Uh, it, you know, I said this last week, even in having a big play on SMU, I said this last week, credit to Pitt's defense, uh, defensive coordinator, defensive staff, for the game plan they put together against Kyle McCord. It was just tremendous. They confused the heck out of him, had him seeing ghosts essentially out there. And that's a Kyle, you know, the same Kyle McCord came out and, and threw for nearly 300 yards against Virginia Tech last week. So, you know, I, I didn't think that Pitt would be able to solve SMU because SMU is, you know, an offense that borders on almost elite at this point. Um, very balanced run and pass. Virginia is just not that. And I think Pitt's defense, you know, is going to be outstanding here in this game. I don't think, I don't think Virginia is going to be able to throw the ball. And I don't think they're going to be in. I think they will be behind at this point, which means they're probably going to have to throw the ball. Um, you know, other points in the season where I've been impressed with Pitt defensively. Uh, made some really good adjustments second second week of the season against Cincinnati to allow their team to come back and win that game. I know there was a couple injuries, but holding Cal to 15 points is impressive in a win in that game. And then kind of finally figuring out North Carolina, where, where they were able to sort of shut down UNC in the fourth quarter and pull away to win by 10. Impressive stuff there. That's sort of how I feel like this game goes. Either this is going to be the prime time home spot blowout that Pitt was on the wrong end of last week, or this is going to be a game similar to the North Carolina game where Pitt just kind of wears them down and eventually pulls away and wins by 10. Either way, I do think Pitt probably gets it done. I also don't hate if you can find a juice seven, if you've got, you know, outs that'll allow you to lay 120 to get minus seven. I think that's a very good pet with, bet with Pitt as well. For the sake of this video and tracking the results of these videos, let's call it Pitt minus seven and a half. I'm pretty confident that not only does Pitt win by a touchdown, they win by more than that. So Pitt minus seven and a half is my free pick for this game. For all my other picks, and these video plays have done extremely well, six and oh, the past two weeks. I've got five of them up this week, and you can find all of those at the Wager Talk YouTube channel um, right here. So like and subscribe. And check out the other videos on the Wager Talk YouTube channel. And then follow me on all platforms at Adam Trigger WT on TikTok, on Instagram, on Twitter. I'm putting different content out on all three. So make sure you give me a follow across the board there. Coupon code FBALL50 gets you that $50 discount. And I hope everyone has a great weekend. Cash all your tickets. We'll see you guys next time.